top vote getter for the Eastern Conference All-Star Squad. Tonight, we retrace the strides of a superstar's career. The city of Saint Laurent, one of Quebec's largest industrial cities, known best for light manufacturing, the production of steel, and above all, its most famous export, number 77 of the Boston Bruins, Ray Bork. Nearly 35 years ago, Ray and Anita Bork brought home their newborn little boy, Raymond Jean Bork, to this Saint Laurent apartment building located about 15 minutes northwest of the Montreal Forum. He was born December 28, 1960, five years to the day after his sister, Lise. At one point, uh, I remember like always bugging her, I wanted a baby brother or sister, and at this one time, she said, yes, you're going to have a baby brother and sister. And I was saying, oh, when, when? And she'd say, well, at your birthday, on your birthday, you'll get one. And she did. When I turned five, uh, Raymond was born. And uh, I expected him to be mine. <laughs> By the age of three, Ray was cutting a career path on the makeshift rink his father maintained across from the apartment building where the family lived. It's it a pretty good-sized rink. And, uh, we used to go out there and skate, pay tags every uh, tag every night. Well, us girls wanting to be figure skaters and the guys wanting to be hockey players, you know. And, uh, yeah, we're all star strong skaters. You always heard hockey in the household all the time. I mean, even when they were sleeping, mm -hmm. the two boys, I mean, they'd be arguing, pass the puck, I mean, in their sleep, actually. So, I mean, you'd hear it all the time. I mean, it was part of us. Dreams were inexpensive, just add ample amounts of imagination and desire. Ray's dad worked overtime and then some as an electrician to keep his kids in skates. He didn't have much, but uh, what he had, um, you know, he gave it all to us. Uh, he made sure that we had equipment. When we were earlier younger, it wasn't new equipment, you know, some of it was used and all that, but after a while we started getting in, in higher levels, and I remember the first pair of skates I had, uh, you know, Bauer Cougars, I think, uh, you know, they were, you know, they were Bowers, and it was like, you know, wow, you know, this is unbelievable. I was working on two jobs, and my wife was working too, and we were pulling the three jobs money to pay for different things. Sometimes he didn't have the money, he ended up getting us new stuff, you know, he, uh, he had debts and, and really uh, took some time to, to pay some of these things off, you know. The Petite Park is where Ray Bork discovered his athletic ability. In the summertime, he'd star in baseball. And come winter, beginning at the age of three, Ray would lace him up to practice hockey. They'd put boards up right here, and they'd form two ice rinks, the perfect outdoor playground. You know, every day after school or all summer long, during the day, we'd meet at the park to play baseball. Or if it was wintertime after school, we'd get to the park and play hockey. It was at this arena where Ray Bork played organized hockey from the age of seven till the time he was a teenager who left for junior. Today, the arena is called the Ray Bork Sports Complex in honor of the city of St. Laurent's favorite son. Looking back now, uh, what I've achieved, and, and you, you kind of look back where it all started, and um, you know, having that rank kind of called uh, the Raymond Bork uh, um, arena in some way is, uh, is really neat. And whenever I drive by there uh, with the kids or, you know, they say, hey, there's your rink that, you know, <laughs> and they, they think it's all mine. During our second intermission, we'll find out about Steve Leach's helmet. Now that right hand lands. Leach can't get his right hand free and Laws has the advantage. Down goes Leach backwards small neighborhood rinks in St. Laurent to Boston and undoubtedly to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Ray Bork's superstar defenseman wasn't exactly born on the blue line. It wasn't until the age of 13, while being coached by his brother-in-law, Bob Davis, that Ray decided on defense. You know, I was always kind of going back and forth, forward, defense, forward, defense, year to year, and that year he kind of he kind of said maybe I should stick back on D, and he had me play defense all that year, and that's really, that's, those are the years where things really took off for me. He believed in Raymond's ability to, to become a superstar, because he told him there, if there's any hope in uh, making it big, I think, you know, being a defenseman will be your, your key, and he was right on. <laughs> 
In the years Bork's amateur career began to blossom, his mother became seriously ill and eventually succumbed to cancer. Gray was only 12 years old when his mother died. You don't understand uh, why or how or like my mom was sick for a long time, but you know, uh, at the end people would come and see her at the house and and we'd be in the living room watching TV with my younger brother and we'd uh, you now we always thought she was gonna get better. And then you'd hear people uh, you know saying certain comments and it was like, you know, I don't know what they're saying, but you know, mom's gonna get better, mom's gonna get better. So that one morning where we were weren't awakened for school and kind of wondering why and my sister walks in and tells us that my mom passed away and um, you know I remember being real tough for, for a little while and, and but my younger brother I was kind of more worried about him than I was for me because he was he really had a tough time with it and I think I, I wasted most of my energy uh, trying to just have him come around and, and worrying about it uh, or thinking about it myself. With his mother's passing, Ray immersed himself in the sport he loved. And at age 15, he got the call to play in a game for St. Laurent's Junior B team with players three to four years his senior. I went up there and remember not playing very much uh, my first period and having some friends of mine in the stands and they start yelling, we want both, we want both. And I'm like, they better shut up, you know. I was just, I got out there first shift and I was just so scared. And, but his fear was brief, and his career was suddenly about to take a quantum leap. After finishing the season with St. Laurent, he was drafted by Three Rivers of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Michel Bergeron was my coach, and three months later, he ends up trading me, and I'm just crying like a little baby in his office and just going nuts because, I mean, I was devastated uh, that it could happen to me. He phoned me on the phone, and he was crying on the phone and everything, you know what I mean? It's, uh, so, uh... I told him to go to Sorrell and I'd be going down, so I went down and uh, I brought his close friend with him. My biggest memory is just following him, playing hockey with my dad. I mean, I'd tailgate even if he didn't want me. Even I remember when I was pregnant for my first one, I mean, he was playing junior here in Verdun and I mean, I was like, I was like this overdue and Raymond would say, what are you doing here? And I'd say, play hockey, <laughs> you know? Many nights I'd done 120 miles to go to a game and 120 miles to come back. Uh, but if you see their faces when they'd see me walk, they'd walk in and with three or four of their friends, uh, you know, it, it pleased you right there, you know what I mean? It, uh, uh, <clears throat> like just their smile would tell you how much he appreciated it. Without his father there to guide him, Ray never might have found his career path. And when he signed his first contract with the Bruins, he found a way to roll back the miles on his father's odometer with a new car. I was in the, sh in the showroom and I was looking and walking all around this uh, uh, Cupridge Classic uh, car. And oh, it was all black and gold. I had never had a new car in my life, eh? And uh, he came out, gave me the keys. He like that one, Dad? I said, is it ever nice, eh? So he passed me the keys. Everything was all arranged in advance, eh? I had big tears coming down my eyes. <laughs> I, uh, I had never owned my new car. Uh, I always had an old car, and I fixed it myself, you know. It was, uh, you know, every time I talk about it, I get to the metal, you know. Working up. According to Ray's dad, the blue line is in the Bork bloodlines. Ray's grandfather, Adlard Bork, was a defensive stalwart in his day. I heard uh, a lot about him. I heard he was a good defenseman and used to get these huge hip checks. Ray Sr. remarried a year after the death of his first wife. Ray's stepmother, Edna, helped pull the family together with love and discipline. She's a great lady and, you know, uh, I feel bad on how maybe she was treated initially, but I think she understood uh, what everything was about. and. Uh, you know, the funny thing is she was one of my mom's really good friends um, growing up. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we were blessed with having two good moms. While today Ray Sr. resides in Moncton, New Brunswick, Ray's siblings, Rita, Lise, and younger brother Ricky, all remain close to the original family home. Ray's older brother Norm lives far to the west near Edmonton. 
Ray left home at age 15 to pursue his hockey career in earnest. And three years later, he was in Boston, selected NHL Rookie of the Year, with five Norris trophies to follow as the league's top defenseman. With the constant support of his family, Ray Bork, originally from 1740 Rue Crevier in St. Laurent, is the picture of success. I think somebody up there is his mother and my father. My mother's up there and watching over him. Because, uh, uh, I, I believe in the higher priority, and I, I think he's watching over him. Raymond Bork, 17 years with the Boston Bruins and the only player in NHL history to have been named to the NHL first or second team All-Star squad every year he's played in the league. There's much more to come.